Those who have followed part 1 of this tutorial series should now have GoPro Studio successfully downloaded and installed on your machine. So let's get started with the next step, importing and converting your captured footage. Moving the content from your GoPro camera onto your computer can be done in one of two ways. The first involves connecting the USB cable that came with your GoPro into the camera itself, and the other end to your computer in order to place the GoPro into USB mode. Personally, I stick to the second method, which involves removing the memory card from the camera, and using a USB card reader connected to a free USB port on your computer. Either way, once connected, launch GoPro Studio. The interface itself is pleasantly simple to use and navigate with only a very slight learning curve. Before beginning I would recommend heading into the file menu and selecting an auto save duration of your own choice, just in case the worst should happen several hours into a project. Back at the main screen at the very top we notice three steps, view and trim, edit and export. These are the three steps covered to create your final video project. Step 1 is the main import process and you'll find yourself at this screen by default. Here users work from left across to right. Clicking the large blue button labelled Import New Files on the left will open a standard dialog box where you are able to search for the captured video or images from your GoPro. Notice the greyed out LRV and THM files. These are low quality thumbnail files used alongside the GoPro smartphone app only. GoPro Studio will only use the highest quality files available, in other words the MP4 files. This populates the left panel with your content. Notice how each clip displays useful information including the name, whether it was captured in 2D or 3D, the duration, along with its resolution and frame rate. Users are able to clear the import panel and start over or remove the current selected clip by clicking the appropriate button beneath the list. Selecting a video clip automatically brings it into the center canvas. Note that if your camera was incorrectly orientated when the video was captured, hit the rotate or flip button to automatically rotate the footage. Hero 4 owners can avoid this step if the auto orientation setting is active, which we've covered in a previous video. Nevertheless, using the playback controls just beneath the clip, users are able to begin playback at normal pace, or skip forwards and backwards a single frame at a time. You are also able to scrub through or jump to specific parts of the currently active video using the timeline. Notice the yellow markers. When capturing video, if the side settings button is pressed, a highlight tag is created. These yellow markers are your highlight tags. In other words, markers that you have previously created providing the ability to jump to specific sections in the video. Rather than import the entire clip, you may only need a small portion of the clip for your project. Hence, with the play marker set at the starting point of the section you require, click the left button here to set what's called an in point. The same can be done to select a point in the video and click the right button to select the out point. GoPro are well known for their fish-eyed look, generated from capturing such a wide angle. To remove this look, hit the advanced settings button. In most cases, these options will be left at their default, although that GoPro typical fisheye look can be removed by clicking this checkbox. Click the lowermost setting to keep these as default for all other imported clips. Finally, give the clip a descriptive name so it's easy to distinguish among other clips, and change the final output directory to another drive or partition if need be. You are now ready to hit the large blue button in order to move the clip into the right side panel called your conversion list. At this point, go ahead and repeat the same procedure for each clip you would like to import for your particular project. With all required clips selected and moved into the conversion list, you are now ready to begin converting the clips, which means they'll be uncompressed and changed into a format that's more easily editable while maintaining a high quality. The conversion could take a while depending upon the power of the computer you're currently using. As each clip completes, the status changes from waiting to done. With all clips successfully converted, the previously labelled convert button can be used to proceed to the next step. This is where you'll spend most of your time building and editing your project. Join me in the next video where we'll begin the editing process.